kind of a long involved type problem. So set it up, draw a picture to get an idea of what's going on. Let's see. A boat leaves the marina traveling north 52 degrees east, which means I'm going up and to the right. So maybe like this at six miles per hour. This is a 52 degree angle since that's my bearing from the vertical. And I travel at six miles per hour for one hour, which means I travel six miles. That's easy enough. I turn 90 degrees counterclockwise, which basically means counterclockwise is this way. I go 90 degrees over here. This new bearing, if we want to draw it out, is north 38 degrees west, which means this angle right here is 38 degrees west. I do that for two hours at the same speed, which means this side, six miles per hour for two hours, is 12 miles. I now want to find my distance from the marina. I can't draw straight, so pretend. It's, I want to find that distance, which is that side right there, and I want to find my bearing, which is actually my bearing from here, or from here right here, my bearing from the marina. We'll just find this bearing right here. One thing I will mention, because it came up in class, how do I know that when I travel 6 miles this direction and 12 miles that direction, this ends up being over in the second quadrant, as opposed to somewhere up here in the first quadrant? Ultimately, outside of practice, I don't. I just kind of use this picture as a guide, and I let the problem itself work out my solution. If somehow I get a solution that doesn't necessarily make sense, that would tell me maybe my picture is wrong and I should have actually had the bearing over here. That will work itself out again. This picture is not set in stone. It's a guide to help us understand what's going on. So really quickly, I want to find my distance right here. Well, I just drew a right triangle. So my distance is just the hypotenuse. So what's my distance? Well, let's see. It's 12 squared, which is 144, plus 6 squared, which is 36. That's C squared. That is 180 is C squared. So C is the square root of 180. Which is 13.4. So this distance is 13.4. Now I want to find my bearing. There are different ways to do this. One thing you can do, and again it's a little hard to see here, I can maybe make it bigger over here. Essentially, what I have is a line going here, then a line going there, and then I come back here. I want to make it nice and big so you can see it. A line going here, a line going there. There we go. I'll make it even bigger. I want to find my bearing. My bearing is this angle right here, which is small, but this is still a right triangle. So in theory, what I can do is find this whole angle. It's just an angle in my triangle. And then I know from over here that this part of the angle is 52 degrees. So whatever angle this turns out to be, subtract 52 from it, and that has to be that part right there, which is my bearing. So really quickly, well, my trig functions. Let's see, I have these sides. We'll use a 12 and a 6. So, tangent of that angle, call it A, equals opposite 12 over adjacent 6, which is 2. So, A equals tan inverse of 2. So, let's see. Second tan inverse of 2... I get 63.4 degrees. So A equals 63.4 degrees. Which means this whole angle is 63.4. But if this part of it is 52, then all I have to do is subtract 52. And the difference has to be this small little angle right over there, which tells me my bearing. So 11.4 degrees. Which means my bearing would still be north, 
but now it's 11.4 degrees west because I'm going left. Essentially, if I did this out in this angle on the triangle ended up being like 50 degrees, less than 52, that would mean, well, my triangle should have stopped on this side and my bearings actually say two degrees in this way. So the math will actually work itself out. As long as I get an angle bigger than 52, then I have to be in this quadrant. If the angle ends up being less than 52, it means my triangle should be over here. We'll look at that in greater detail on some other 